Since I was a kid, I've always loved being on the field. When I was eight, I had brought home a flyer from school for like the league tryouts, and so I brought it to my dad. Tryouts were the next day, so we had to go that night to get all the gear, bat, helmet, everything, and like, I practiced in the backyard. I'm like, well, you don't really even go outside. We, you never picked up a ball before or a bat. And she's like, I really want to try it. So we said, okay. They practiced till 12 midnight the night before tryouts. She made the team, all coaches picked her. When she started playing ball, that's all she wanted to do. She loved it automatic. We knew at some point that she was gonna want to play college ball and that's all our life was. I remember one tournament, I had slid in a second and like, I thought I like pulled my back or something. I just moved my back and I was like, mom, like, my back's really hurting me. We get to the car and like, I'm sitting in the car and I'm just so stiff, I can't move. And I was like, started crying in the back seat. I was like, mom, like, I don't know what's wrong. Literally, we carried her inside. And when we did, she was just like, I can't move. And at that point, we knew something was wrong because she was in tears and I took her straight to the emergency. We were there for a day and a half because they were running so many tests on her because they couldn't figure out what was going on with her. They took my blood work, I had like MRIs done. They found out I had ankylosing spondylitis. It's a type of arthritis. I was just like, hold on, is this my kid? She never showed signs of anything. They said it was like one in a million and you know, and it's typically in older people. And I was just like, she's 12, like, what, you know, what do I tell her? Because I knew nothing about it. And they're like, it's probably something that she's had, but it just never, she never had a flare up. I was told I had hips of like an 80 year old woman. Carrying on with softball, I mean, I could end up in a wheelchair and all these things. If I can play the game for as long as I can without the AS getting to me, then I'm gonna play it. I mean, I'm not gonna let it stop me. I cried just outside the hospital. After everything was done, I cried. It was a hard decision, but you know, I was supporting her being diagnosed so young and her doctor telling her, you're never gonna play at the next level. It's a lot for somebody to overcome, I, I know. And she, she did it with a smile on her face, worked hard, she never skipped a beat. Having the diagnosis just really just fuels me because, I mean, I was told that I can't. I'm competitive, I wanna prove, you know, I wanna prove you wrong. The diagnosis that really just pushed me to just be the best that I can be. Caitlin Washington used that motivation to make varsity as a freshman at Atascacita High School, where she helped her team reach its first regional quarterfinals. Five months before Caitlin would begin her sophomore season, life was changing for her biggest supporter. I had just got married nine days before. My doctor called me in, something I was sick, went to the emergency. I was diagnosed with bladder cancer. What am I gonna tell my kids? What am I gonna tell my new husband? I didn't wanna interrupt their lives. <laughs> that was my thing. I didn't wanna interrupt their lives at all. I just remember we were in the car one day. She said, you know, um, I went to the doctor today and I think I, I have to take some medicine, you know, some pills that are chemo pills. And I was like, chemo? Like, what is that? And you have cancer. I was scared, I didn't know what to do. I cried in the car and I didn't know how to handle it. It was harder telling her because we were so close. We'd been so close because of softball. I knew she depended so much on me, like getting to her games, going, you know, out of town. I said, nothing's gonna change. I'm still gonna be the same person. And this is what we do. I said, we fight. I said, we're fighters. Even though like, she was sick, she was still out there with my game, so if she had to go to treatment, she would still try to make it to my games or get me to wherever I needed to be for my tournaments. I just put a smile on my face, and, you know, I knew I needed to be there for her. And it didn't matter how I was feeling. When she was diagnosed, she's always had to work extra hard. She goes every day. If she can get up and go, I can get up and go too, and I can watch her play and, you know, this is it's just a little cancer, it's just a little bump in the road. And I promised her, I said, I will see you at that next level. Caitlin turned down multiple scholarship offers and in the fall of her senior year, signed a letter of intent with Texas. That following February, her mother went back to the doctor for testing. 
The results came back the next day. She had told me she was going to the doctor. And I was like, okay, like, what? so we had practice after school and I was there practicing. And then next thing I know, she showed up to my practice. I was in remission. I was waving them down. When she seen my face, she knew, we knew right away. And we started crying and. <laughs> It was a really good feeling. It was one of the best feelings. Because I knew that that took a big, big, big weight off of her. I wanted to tell her on the field because that's her first love. Because I could have waited till she got home or, you know, but I wanted her to know on that field. I felt like I needed to do that for her. She didn't let anything stop her from helping me to you know, follow my dreams. She's my best friend. She has exceeded my expectations. I'm super proud of her, and I know this is just the beginning. I know she hasn't even showed the world what she can do.